Thank you. Hello. Dude. Can you hear me okay? Yes. <laughs> I will give uh, those two laughs, which I know are Chris Bacon and Andy Kemet. Uh, Chris Bacon, of course, from Board of Missoula. Be sure and support them. And Andy Kemet, a local uh, photographer. Please get your... Uh, I, I like to start with local commercials. That's what <laughs> uh for you so i'm already giving aren't i i was so nervous about this because i thought there'd be kids watching and i'm like well, I, I gotta do family friendly material and then the guy the theme song for missoula gives he says shit in it I been all my shit material are you kidding me so there I got two of them. and uh this was Superstation TBS, you're only allowed three shits. Well, there we go. I've done all three. I've spent my ass words. I was kind of nervous as a result, um, just assuming this would be an audience of needy children. So I went down, ironically, to the corner store and uh, got some vodka. Is it okay if I, I'm just admitting that about myself. Okay, I know a lot of us at the beginning of this quarantine, um, I don't know what to do with my hands. Uh, at the beginning of this quarantine, I was, I quit drinking. I was doing chin-ups and sit-ups, like Rocky training in a barn. And I was, I was healthy. And everyone else, I'd look on social media and they're like, oh, I'm on my second bottle of wine. I'm like, not me. I'm turning this life around. And the moment I see that, uh everyone is thriving again businesses are opening back up everyone's up to things they're starting to work again that's that's when i choose to slow it down a little bit with some <laughs> i like to create my own obstacles zoo town i can't believe i said it i'd like oh, to have the zoo town stricken from the record bailiff <laughs> comes in thank you doug llewellyn i'm gonna do a lot of references to 80s people's court <laughs> and that's appreciated, and uh, that's that's my gift to you, Missoula. It's just Zoo Town isn't the best name. Can we change it back to Oli's Country Store yes. and Beer? No, the Best by a Country Mile. Andy knows what I'm talking about. Those red hot dogs. Oh, bright red and ready for eating. In a month or so, we don't have to eat them now. They'll be here rotating on a spit. And they'll be waiting for you. Uh, you have a, pick your pick your hot dog now. Have it in a couple months. They're that good. They're that good. I went. I am in. Uh, I'm in an area known as Angelino Heights in uh, Los Angeles, which uh, boasts uh, the most Victorian homes. It's a nice area, but it's also featured in uh, the movie Training Day. And uh, there is some activity, and I just experienced it firsthand. I'm not kidding. I, so I walked down to that uh, corner store. That's a, a nice word for liquor. Uh, <laughs> and uh, a guy, as I was doing, I knew he'd be trouble. I'm maybe I'm paranoid. I don't know because I've been wearing a mask in my house, a ski mask. Because uh, if someone else does break in, hey, won't they be surprised? Ski mask. <laughs> The old classic switcheroo. It's friend to confuse and baffle a home invader. I don't know if I came to the right place. This guy has the hair of a of a scary person slowly emerging from a trembling bush. I've cultivated this, uh, and I'm barely, barely a part of society. Anyway, this guy, I'm doing better than him. He had a Tasmanian devil neck tattoo nothing against neck tattoos i know it's a fashion thing now you don't have to earn it in prison anymore you can get uh teardrops under your eye for helping old ladies across the street now uh, but this guy, when it's taz and uh inevitably holding a basketball uh standing in his own tornado created by his fast moves uh you know that that's on someone's neck one time I let a guy, this was like five years ago, I let a guy with a Tasmanian uh, tattoo, it was on his arm, Tasmanian devil. I let him borrow my phone for five minutes. He was having a bad day. His mom was supposed to pick him up. He said, have you seen a blue van? I'm like, this sounds promising. 
So I gave him my phone to use, and I thought for sure he was going to run away. Uh, but he didn't. He just used the phone, and I felt like, well, here I am being judgmental, you know? But still, to this day, from unknown numbers, I get texts, I believe, from his ex-wife telling me what a bad father I am. Uh, I don't believe I've had children, but uh, she could have something on me, but I think it's about Tazzy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway, his friend, or they might know each other, was down here, and I'm not, as I walked home, he came up to me and he said, hey man, do you want to buy a laptop uh, or a <laughs> iPad? I'm like, they still make iPads? I didn't say that to him. He was scary. Uh, I was looking right at that tattoo. And, uh, and I said, no, you know what? I, I don't really want to buy any electronics here in the dark. And, and, then, and then he said, I'm not kidding. He said, uh, well, I have a knife. And then I was, I thought, uh, to sell me or to stab me with. Uh, and then he just shrugged. He's like, he shrugged. He's open for whatever. So either I just narrowly avoided getting mugging, getting mugging, <laughs> Maybe uh, steal my money because of my poor grammar. I I narrowly avoided getting mugged, sir. Uh, or he was just a terrible knife salesman. I know from my years of Cutco, that's not yeah. how you approach a stranger. Yeah. You get a list and you arrive at their house. It's a pyramid scheme. Come on, do it the real way. Not in the dark. <laughs> hey, I got knives. We all do, buddy. Oh. <laughs> So anyway, they almost died. They almost died. Hey, this is the real zoo town. It's a zoo. Um, it, it's fun that you're all watching live music. It's cool that I'm doing this. Uh, this is called Zoom Comedy now. Uh, uh, usually horrifying. I'm, I, I am now happy that I can hear two friendly voices laughing in the background. I, I assume that's all of you in Missoula tuning in as well. But... Uh, yeah, there are a lot of things though that I realized during quarantine that I that I don't miss oddly. I mean, I want restaurants to thrive. I want businesses to thrive. My whole life, wherever it was chicken two and then there was the there's one location. Every time a business would open up in there and they're like, We make pajamas for cats or something, I'm like, Oh, they're gonna fail. And it, it hurts me when I see a candle shop or someone that makes soap for cats, anything cat product related, I'm like, I feel like they're gonna fail and I get I get sad. So we it's important to uh, support businesses and live comedy, but I don't miss restaurants. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't like it when people watch me eat. I was raised to guard my plate, uh, thinking it might be my last meal. It, I wasn't in an abusive household, it's just, uh, my parents weren't enthusiastic about meal preparation, so I guarded my food with my life. And uh, I don't like it when people look at my uh, my tray. My tray, what have I been in prison? My tray of food, <laughs> don't be looking at it. I just visited the local knife salesman. <laughs> Every time I go to a, like a Mexican restaurant, I'm like, oh, I'll, uh, judging by the ingredients here, I'm gonna thoroughly enjoy your fajitas. And uh, I get fajitas uh, without even thinking. I, I, I get pretty excited about fajitas, but I always forget how they come out of the kitchen with a lot of fanfare. Uh, they are sizzling really loud and uh, everyone takes notice. Fajitas are obnoxious, they're spitting, the whole, the whole kitchen comes out, they're singing the fajita song and, and the entire restaurant's like, oh, who? Who got fajitas? And you have to like raise your hand in ownership, like they they're coming to me. Oh god! And then they look at me disappointed, as if they're like, "Oh, I thought it was going to be someone fancy that got the fajitas." I can't believe this isn't George Clooney. Which, if I didn't have my hair like this, I uh, Andy will attest. There was a time I looked a little like the Clune Dog. Bowling, uh, bowling's <laughs> over. We are no one's going to bowl anymore. I'm sorry, Liberty Lanes, if you're still hanging on. Actually, I think they're tits up. Sorry, kids, but uh, yeah, I don't. I think bowling is a thing of the past. Imagine going to a, a building filled with people. Scary. That's already scary. And then uh, you just put some rented shoes on. The whole town's worn them. Just uh, some rented shoes, and then 
you, you pick out your public ball and stick your fingers in some municipal holes. That'll be fun. And what are you going to do with that plain hand? Well, you're going to eat chicken wings. You're going to pull and you're going to pick up food and shove that in your municipal hole. I'm talking about a mouth here, kids. I assume there's a lot of kids staying up late to watch the fair man huck some jokes in their family. Anyway, the fair man, that's a zoo town of giving yourself nicknames. I do not go by the fair man uh, unless I'm at the Western Montana Fair. You know me in 4-H. I will judge your cow. <laughs> um, it's over though. It's so germy. Just think about it. it's over. I don't even know how. Where are we gonna get? I think it's always been that way though. We all slowly get weeded out of the sport due to disease. You know. I think eventually, if you're able to stick your fingers in those rental holes and eat the same hand and still be living, you just eventually end up on ESPN. You eventually end up a pro bowler. We all start and we're decent bowlers, but most of us die off because of the germ. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if your joke doesn't have a punchline, just end with, and pause. <laughs> Swimming's over. I was swimming quite a bit up until this thing, and I, I miss it. I really have not a lot of exercise. I've been uh, golfing. Oh, this is great. I golfed uh, yesterday. And I golfed the day before yesterday. I wore the same golf specific pants. At the end of the day, I uh, did 36 holes. That's two rounds of 18. I, you guys should see how I've, I've been golfing pretty well. And uh, I was tired at the end of the day. I walk, I don't rent a cart, threw those pants off. The next morning, put them back on, thought I'd walk down, get a breakfast burrito. People were snickering. I realized the previous day's underwear was hanging from my pant leg. That's a thing. <laughs> That's a real thing. They were real underwear, and I was real embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> the swimming's over. I uh, I was swimming quite a bit at the uh, Twenty Four Hour Fitness here. You don't. You guys have some independently owned uh, uh, gymnasiums uh, that, uh, and that's what I like about Missoula. But I go to the big corporate Twenty Four Hour Fitness, third floor down, well beneath ground level. There is a swimming pool. And uh, it's just me and some old, some old folks, and uh, it's yeah. I can go whenever I want, though. I feel a hankering to swim at three in the morning. Bam, twenty-four hour fitness anytime I want. Yeah, it's pretty convenient. But I'd be okay if twenty-four hour fitness became like uh, twenty-three hour fitness. You know, if it meant they just took that extra hour to clean some of the band aids out of the pool. <laughs> I just don't think they should be mile markers as I pass them, and I'm not going to touch them. I can't see them. I don't have prescription Googles, uh, but I, uh, I do. Uh, I'm not going to touch them because those band aids are other people's wishes. You're stealing the wishes. I thought that would get more. Can you hear my nabber? Uh, my nabber. She, it's my neighbor that steals things. <laughs> my next door neighbor. You guys like my signature improv? <laughs> my neighbor laughs all day. I hear, well, she can maybe hear me. These are thin walls. So between you and I, it's a high pitched cackling laugh. Um, it's, there is no laugh that I don't like, though. Uh, she, here's a, some of the things that make her laugh uh, cooking. Um, <laughs> Music. She laughs at uh, indie rock. Uh, any, she'll laugh at any. Guess who's never made her laugh? Her next door neighbor comedian. I have never <laughs> went to her laugh ever, and I have tried. I do flat falls across my eyes. I'm like, hello neighbor. Whoa, is that <laughs> never gotten a high pitched chuckle out of her. The other day there was a possum, and she couldn't stop. She can probably hear me, but I can hear her laughing. And if you can uh, say so here in the, uh, in, it's nice that there's a comment section. This is a virtual show, but it's nice that we found a venue for anyone that wanted to type a heckle. Heckling's an important part of comedy. So if you just want to drop down, you suck. Go ahead, don't do it. I will see it and it will hurt my feelings. <laughs> I'm a local man. Don't hassle me. I went to Paxson Panther as a Paxson Panther elementary student. 
I had to yell at it, passerby last time I visited because they saw my California plates and thought I was bringing up a load of COVID. They're like, me off. California, take this, buddy. And I'm like, hey, I'm the Paxton Panther. I'm still <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I had a pretty good childhood, uh, but, but my parents did make me walk three blocks to school. But they were worried about it. There was no abuse. There was subtle abuse. Uh, like my mom never let me have sweets. Uh, my mom actually told me the ice cream man only plays music when they're all out of ice cream. So subtle, but still hurtful to a child. <laughs> And then she made me dress because so I could safely uh, get uh, my ass kicked. She, I dressed like a uh, crossing guard. My mom made me on an or hunter's orange uh, safety vest, uh, 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 put a stop sign flag on the back with reflective tape. I think my dad uh, put that back there. It was a joint effort for the two of them. And they gave me a stop sign flag on a stick, not a little stick, a, a freaking a broomstick, a giant flag. It was six feet in the air. And it just said stop, and I would wave it around. But I didn't know it was just so I could cross the street because there was a crossing guard on duty, just a lady dressed exactly like me. So I reached the corner, and I'm like, no. I almost leapt into traffic just to validate my my terrible outfit. And, and, oh, I, and the whole time I thought the stop sign flag was because of kidnappers. Every day they're like, there's another white van. Three of us are missing. We were all, everyone, everyone knows it was a white van. They couldn't catch the guy. We didn't have alerts on our phones. Anyway, so if anything, I was just flat. I don't know why I was, I thought if I flapped it around, I would really reason with a kidnapper, like, stop, I really shouldn't. But if anything, I was getting more attention. Like, look at that kid. I, he has the most spirit. I'll grab him. You know? <laughs> and, hey, look at my super nice colors. I'm in the street right now. <laughs> it never happened. Thank, thank God. Thank goodness. Thank, thank the Lord. Yes, I'm very religious. Went to the Presbyterian church, uh, featured in a river runs through it. You know, the Bitterroot, the Blackfoot, the Clark Fork, ever hear of them? I consider myself a man. I do. There was a brief period where I thought I wasn't, but I have never fit in my life. I, it's so embarrassing to be from Missoula, Montana. I am in uh, bacon haven't fished either. We've never fished a lick in our life. Maybe you're on to your grandpa, but you're just trying to win his approval. I've never got a fish, eaten it, and said, boy, I can take care of myself. Uh, it makes sense that I wear so much plaid. So I finally, here in Los Angeles, um, went on a boat, a chartered boat, uh, most of them professional fishermen. And uh, it was pretty convenient. You get on the boat, they give you a giant pole. Everything's provided. You buy a certificate, they give you the bait. The bait is there. It's in a trough. You, I thought it'd be worms. What do I know? It opened it up. It's live fish. So it's like sardines that are about that big, squid together in a trough, swimming in what they think is harmony until someone picks them up. The big old brass hook in the head. Everyone would tell it. I got on the boat, I'm like, oh, we got to bait our own big giant hook with a live fish. So it starts. I've never held a gun. I've never hunted. I, I was handed a gun once. Uh, I didn't. I was like, nope, don't like it. I dropped it. It went off, hidden off. I was at a family reunion. I don't like uh, guns personally. I think actually I have a pretty good idea for gun control. Uh, that I think we should make it a law that you have to wear a mask to buy a gun. I think that no one, I think we'd see not a lot of, because it's the same people, you know what I mean? No offense if you're an NRA member, but I'm assuming, who am I hiding in these secrets from? Have you ever used your hand like, to tell a secret? Like, let's say this guy uh, is, is kind of a jerk. Oh, uh, yeah, this guy. And this guy's your friend. And you're like, hey, man, what's up with the asshole? Oh, whoops. You put the hand visor on the wrong side. And so he definitely hears it. The sound bounces off into his ears. His feelings are hurt. Anyway, uh, he wasn't wearing a mask. So uh, anyway, there it goes. It's important. Uh, there's a lot of people that don't believe in the vaccine. To that, I say, uh, why don't you point out how many people you know with smallpox and polio? Oh, yeah. Those were vaccines. 
that got rid of those. You dumb dummy. <laughs> you know what? Take offense. That's right. I'm being political here too in the zoo. <laughs> if I can't hear anyone laughing, I wonder if it's like that with my neighbor. Like she never laughs, so I just talk uncontrollably. Uh, how much time has passed? I think one third done. Did I freeze? It might be my internet connection. I haven't played my bills for one year. Okay. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of stuff around the house. I'm working on some bikes here. Uh, I, uh, I just finally uh, pulled my pillowcases off my uh, pillows. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but when we sleep, uh, coffee comes out of our ears. It's a weird <laughs> way to find out, but I have on my pillows what can only be coffee stains. And I think it's from all the years of holding in sneezes during breakfast. I mean, scrambled eggs. <laughs> Yeah, it's the worst thing to spray in public. Here at the house alone, all year, I've been spraying eggs everywhere. But uh, I don't like to do a hot coffee spit take, you know? So I, I hold it in. It stays in my head. And then I go take a nap after breakfast. Coffee comes out the ears. Uh, that, I just figured it out. That was just some out loud thinking. And uh, anyway, if you're a doctor, let me know if uh, that made any uh, actual sense. And uh, Oh, other some good news. Uh, I saw a bee the other day. <laughs> I know it's been years since any of us saw a bee, just a classic. I've seen some bees. Like occasionally you'll just see one limping on the sidewalk. They're gray. <laughs> They're missing one wing. I saw a bee recently with a bad knee. He was just circling. He was in little circles. What a bad knee, a knee with, a bee with bad knee, bee's knees are supposed to be a good thing, right, Grandpa? What's next? Born pajamas? <laughs> For any of you out there that don't know what I'm talking about, uh, that gal over there, the bee's knees, yeah, I really think she, she's the cat's pajamas. That's a reference to that obsolete uh, saying, incidentally, I'm 87 years old. I'm an old man. I know it looks like I'm not lotion mostly, but I am aging rapidly from the inside out. I am dying like an avocado. <laughs> anyway, so we're fishing on this boat. I'm going back to it. I'm not going to get sidetracked by my own hysteria. I put the I was I picked up one of these flopping fish. I put the hook right in its head. I said sorry. I whispered sorry to a fish. I did it like three or four times. Like I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And then by the fifth or sixth one, I was like right in the eye, you asshole. Like I'm just not used to casting. And I'm not kidding. Right as I cast, the fish was still flopping. I could see it in the air. But right then, this beautiful bird. Uh, like an albatross or, or just a seagull that really took care of himself. You ever see those ripped seagulls? They got lats and washboards. <laughs> like a hot bird came tearing around the corner, swept down, ate my fish in midair with the hook. I saw it go down his neck into his bird body. And so then I'm just flying a bird like a kite uh trying to reel him in uh, and while crying i just started crying in front of all the fishing men men that fished i was crying my fishing just got escalated to hunting this other thing i've never done and uh it was absolutely terrifying i thought i could help him i had my index finger out i'm like i'll scoop it out of your beak i'm gonna bring it but the, uh, the bird was trying to go the other way and i just made things much worse. And then the fishing, the head fisher man, he came and clipped the line. But the bird flew away. It's like, look at him go. He'll be okay. And the and the captain's like, no, nah, that's a dead bird. Dead <laughs> bird, <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? I don't care about birds. I mean, they're okay, but they're kind of annoying, right? Anyways, uh, Eagles. I don't care for eagles. Not the American uh, mascot. The eagle. I mean the band. The Eagles. I don't like the Eagles. I don't like their music. I don't like the cut of their jibs. I don't like the Eagles. I don't think anyone my age enjoys the music of the Eagles. Mainly because it makes us think of our dads driving drunk. Long windy road. Their shirts open. Why are you wearing a medallion? You won't even call mom. 
that's about someone else's dad. Everyone here involved knows that I have a terrific father. <laughs> How's Butte doing? I'd like to just bring up some other cities. Sure, I care about Missoula, but let's let's talk about Butte. Are they doing okay? How's that pool, that poison pond? It's, it's the birds, they just fly above it and the fumes alone kill them. That is a deadly town. And when you go there, you know it. Of course evil can evil in there. Did I please? It's fun to go to Butte, Montana, and because of course it's such a rough town. You go into any the middle of the day, everyone's just drunk at a bar. The jukebox stops, and they're like, "We got a liberal from Missoula coming in," and uh, it's 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 it just makes sense that evil can evil is from there. Because if you go around town, you do realize around any given corner, there just is a row of six or seven flaming school buses. Evil can evil was not a thrill seeker. <laughs> You just had to learn to jump these flaming buses out of necessity. I don't know if the school district there is on strike or something, but this was just a guy who wanted to go around on his street bike dressed like Elvis. He's just an Elvis fan who played his hog. And here, all of a sudden, he's like, well, I guess I got to become a stuntman. I'm pretty good at hopping over these school buses. And that's the story of Evil Knievel. <laughs> you guys on the uh, social media have you guys been to your myspace page lately it's still there did you know that your myspace page is still on the internet it looks a little different though it's uh it's a mess i went to my myspace page it's now a spirit halloween store <laughs> yeah for those that don't know, all the blockbuster videos in every town became a Halloween store. And I thought it would be uh, hilarious to imagine a web page that was the, on its second life, much like those blockbusters. Sometimes I'll explain my joke. There's nothing more horrifying than doing comedy to no audience. <laughs> well, it's also scary to do it for an audience, you know. I go on the road sometimes, and uh, it's always, it's always at the end of a show. Some drunk dad comes up to me, and he always says, "Hey, man, that's better than I could do," and that always makes it worth it. <laughs> you know, able to pass the ability of some drunk dad that never even thought to try comedy. That's why I do. That's why I do it. It really feels great. Keep saying that at the end of my comedy concerts. <laughs> I met a girl in my space. Uh, I actually brought her to Missoula. These guys might remember. Uh, beautiful girl. She was sending me messages, and I thought it was a pretend person. Even back, this is way before... Uh, cat, cat fishing? Yeah. Oh God! What if I caught a cat when I was fishing? <laughs> terrible. Thank God it was a bird. Things can always be worse. Is my point. Anyway, I met this girl in my face, and she, she was like, "Yeah, we. I kind of have a boyfriend, boyfriend right now, and I noticed him in one of her photos, and he was just an MMA fighter, an actual uh, professional fighter of mixed martial arts." And so I stopped talking to her abruptly online then one day uh he was no longer i noticed he was deleted from all her photos and i was like well now's my chance to to meet this girl and so i was like hey how you been she's like great let's meet today and i'm like all right she's on the rebound i'm gonna date this girl and we had a great day we got a tattoo together in the middle of the day tasmanian devils matching <laughs> and uh, I, I had a great time. We did get matching tattoos on our ankles. I wear socks every day. Don't worry about it. Even in Hawaii, which will get you beat up there wearing socks. They do not like socks. I, if you go to Hawaii, you can even go to an ABC store. They do not sell socks. If you ask anyone about socks or even what socks are, they will put you on a spit and shove an apple in your mouth. Just so you know, if anyone starts traveling, you want to go to Hawaii, Leave your socks at home, they'll kill your ass. 
<laughs> anyway, I covered this tattoo with my socks. We took a picture of it. Uh, I sent her my address for future reference in case she wanted to come back down. Uh, and then one day I woke up and I was getting dressed in my bedroom and this kid walks in, uh, veiny and ripped like a hot seagull and he got right in my face and he <laughs> just said, I'm here to kick your ass. And I was like, oh no, this is terrible news. Uh, please don't, I would hate if this happened right now. And, but I had my mother hot coffee. I'm like, I know what to do. Just volleyball, hit him with the coffee into his face, out his ears later onto his pillow. But he didn't beat me. He, he actually got kind of emotional and he just started warning me about what a bad girlfriend she is. He's like, well, I suggest you stop seeing her. But if you do, just know she's very manipulative. And then he started sobbing and he sat on my bed which was covered with my laundry, which isn't that adorable when you leave it. You think the snuggles bear gets away with it. So can I. Anyway, that's a reference from a commercial from the 80s. Anyway, uh, he just kind of got sad. And I'm like, it'll be OK, man. I, I won't see her anymore if you don't want me to. That was a lie. I saw her for uh, about a year. Anyway, uh, he laughed finally after threatening me. At one point, he did push me and say, Oh, big fancy comedian, why is your room all messy? And I was like, oh, man, if I had known you were coming to beat me up, I would have spruced up the place. And then he, find, he kind of, <laughs> of laughed. He's not that bad of a guy. He's trained to kill people, but I could tell he'd never done it in public. Like, daddy here. No, I've never killed anyone. <laughs> anyway, he left. And then I swear, after that relationship with that girl, months later, years even, I started seeing him because I worked at an action sports network and he had quit fighting uh, mixed martial arts. He had become a skydiver, like a base jumper, uh, squirrel suits, you know, where they fly at the edge of the building. He was just an all around thrill seeker. He just came to my bedroom to seek some thrills. <laughs> and I, 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 would, I saw him, the second time I saw him, I'm like, hey, remember me? You came to my house and he was like, his face went red. He's like, oh man, I was so crazy back then. I'm so sorry. I drove all the way up from San Diego to beat you up. I, it was a mistake. I, I was in a weird place. I'm like, don't worry about it, man. We shook hands. The next time I saw him, years after that, we like hugged. Hey man, I think he forgot how he even knew me. Good to see you again. I'm like, weird, are we becoming friends? Me and this guy to came to uh, beat me up anyway. One day his parachute didn't open and he, he died. He's passed away. He's no longer with us. Anyway, the point is, don't mess with me. <laughs> I didn't freeze. That was, oh. I, I, I freeze sometimes on stage, but that was not it. It's usually, it's rarely because of an internet connection, but that's the future of entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was kind of a edgier one. Sorry for kid. I figure uh, we're getting close to ten o'clock uh, Missoula Standard Time. Is it Missoula Standard Time? You guys have your own area, right? You heard it. You're the zoo. The mayor's a lion tamer. Zoo town. Mom. Don't drink. Don't drink. Don't drink Montucky. Don't even say Montucky. I will not listen. <laughs> yes. Is it, brewed, is it brewed in Montana, though? I should do my research. If it's a locally brewed, nah, we know it's Anheuser Bush. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let's talk about ex girlfriends. Another ex girlfriend of mine that I left Missoula with, we, uh, we moved to Texas and, uh, and then, and lived there a few years and then moved to. The, uh, to Los Angeles together. And then um, mutually, we decided to uh, break up. To you know, after several years, seven years, it was kind of an amicable uh, breakup. We even had a fun party where we flipped a coin and split up a lot of the, a lot of the belongings. Uh, we, I wore a lot of her clothes. And, uh, <laughs> and I won the mattress. I'm pretty good at flipping coins. Right? Whoops, sorry. She's sitting right here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I do a lot of shows. Anyway, 
we are we still live together to complete our lease and in that time she started seeing someone a guy that i kind of knew because we both submitted a tape uh, to snl and uh i did not get passed he did and he was hired around the time they were already dating and uh so but did i think it was weird i'm a grown-up i'm just glad some other guy swept in so i could um, you know, meet lunatics on MySpace. <laughs> uh, so was, and I actually like, he did end up on the show, uh, you know, and which I was never jealous. I'm like, that's the job I wanted. He's with my ex, that's fine. I'm an adult, this doesn't bother me. But then on that first episode he's on at the end when they're like, good night, thanks for watching Saturday Night Live. He was, he was wearing one of my t-shirts, just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Filling it out a little more, broader shoulders, and that's when it kind of hit me. Uh, it's nothing about them. It's just it's weird to watch an article of your own clothing trump your career. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of these are just thoughtful. I have some real jokey jokes, but uh, I, it, they just don't work for this longer format that is insane monologues into a computer. <laughs> there are times where I felt mentally ill. Uh, I mean, it runs in my family a little bit. My mom came home once. She had just finished punching a guy in the cheek with her car keys. Anyway, the point is, they always say you end up marrying your mother. If I, any, that's why to this day, uh, if I date anyone, I make sure they ride a bike everywhere. And, and no janitors. I'm not dating any janitors. Imagine getting those to the face. I miss you, mom. <laughs> All right. Some of these are funny. Some of these are sad. <laughs> They're funny. Yeah. Put the They're jaw funny. on my Yes, yeah, starving myself. <laughs> All right. Well, that one made me sweat a little. How are we doing on time? And when I freeze, this is just a note to anyone watching. When I freeze and I notice my screen, has have I been freezing periodically during this comedy concert? Much. It's just me. My maybe my connection. I'm high. I'm hardwired in. No, I'm not. I forgot to do it. We are running on Wi-Fi. I have an Ethernet cable. I should have plugged it in. And I call myself a professional entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I'm reading some of the comments here. Hysterical. Thank you, Municipal Holes. That was from Andy. Okay, that about does it. Just the people that I know listening. Uh, <laughs> so I can basically be at home right now in a living room with some friends. Put in for <laughs> way less effort. Are there any strangers out there? Yes, but our keyboards are broken. Isn't it funny how at the, at the beginning of this, I was threatened by the comments. Now I'm depending on them like they're a lifeblood. Please, someone tell me I'm good at something. I haven't, I haven't seen another person. I can't stop bathing with my plants. I get naked and I shower with my plants and I play classical music. Is there a chance of getting electrocuted the way I do it? Holding a record player? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I've been uh, not with anyone. I just talked to my plants. It's been a lonely time. I found a cactus actually in the sidewalk. It was gray and not doing well, kind of like a bee. And uh, and then I took it home and I, I watered it and it really started to thrive. And then uh, I watered it a second time and it died uh, pretty abruptly after a couple of weeks. Anyway, it's fun to find out you're less nurturing than the desert. <laughs> <laughs> so how am I doing on time? I didn't start uh, with the time. Or am I? Should I wrap it up here? That'd be funny if right then I put on a condom on camera. You guys. <laughs> what are we doing? I saw some of the comments here and I wasn't sure. I mean, I got plenty. Uh, I could do another. Just a hint, though. Just go ahead and say how long has this been happening. I hope we're earning a lot of money for those in need in Missoula. I didn't do any research. Oh, Marcy. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy to see you, but I am happy to see you. But I could have kept going. Oh, darn. I have to stop. All my good jokes were about to come up. <laughs> Hello, Fairbanks. Hello. Thank how you. are you? Of course. That's how I end every set. Just taper off into a uh, into a back and forth with an old friend. It's good to see you. Nice flowers, by the way. 
<laughs> no over water those, they'll die. <laughs> 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 what? I, 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 I cry I at the end of all my stuff now. What's that? <laughs> you, you have coffee coming out of your ears? Is that what you said? I, th I think I have some lag time on our voice. Oh, I'll just give you a minute to finish each sentence. Oh, wow. Quite a lag. I just finished saying that. That's Chris, so crazy. I wish you could have been here. Me person. too. I will be home. I will come home and uh, I'm not going to bring my California license plates with me, uh, but I am going to ride a bike around and make full eye contact with everyone. And I'm all the way vaccinated. So if you see me, I will hug and possibly kiss you and tell you I love you. Uh, because a lot of people, I've been skateboarding with these guys lately and uh, just COVID safe. I found this group of dudes that are my age that I uh, skateboard we'll with. Montana tags. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I, I should probably get them. Uh, but yeah, these guys I skate with, it was hard to meet them. I tried this uh, app called Grinder, but it turns out those guys don't skateboard at all. Uh, they do want to meet in an empty parking lot. But anyway, I've been, uh, skateboarding with these friends and at the end they always say love you man yeah, uh -huh. they say love you man and I'm like I don't know how to respond to that I'm not gonna say love you too. I say I love you too that I say it all the which is a way different message love you man I love you too that's what I've been doing anyway I'll give you 20 minutes to catch up to my signal Okay, I'm done. All right, the lag time's too weird for me. Oh, yes. Chris, I love you. Thank you. I love you. <laughs>